In this video, we are going to learn more about standard deviation of normally distributed data. Standard deviation is one of the measures of the spread of a data set, and it is probably the measure of spread that you will use most often. What I mean by spread is, it's a number that tells you how far apart do the values in your data set tend to be away from the mean. So how spread out are all the numbers in the data versus are they all really close together towards the mean? So the larger the standard deviation, the more spread out the data. If it's a very small standard deviation, it means most of the data was really close together around the mean. And next we're going to be learning about how to actually calculate the standard deviation. So it's important to know that the standard deviation is related to the variance. And in fact, standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So if you know how to calculate variance, calculating standard deviation is just one more step of taking a square root. The symbol for standard deviation is the Greek letter sigma, which looks like that. And the formula for standard deviation depends slightly a little bit on whether or not you have data from the full population or just from a sample of the population, just in the same way that it depended this, on that for variance as well. So if we're talking about a population, then the standard deviation is found by first figuring out the difference between all of your data points, x, and the population mean, mu, and squaring those values, and then taking the sum of all of those values, and finally dividing by n, which is the number of data points you have, and then for standard deviation, we take the square root of all of that. So without the square root, it is variance. With the square root, it is standard deviation. And again, x was the data values. So that's your actual data. And mu was the population mean. And n is the number of data points. Now, if instead of having information about the whole population, you only have information from a sample, then the formula is changed very slightly. Basically, instead of n on the bottom of this fraction is n minus 1. So it will look like this. And another difference you might notice is we have this x bar, which is again the mean, but it is the notation or the symbol we use for uh, the sample mean as opposed to mu being the symbol for population mean. And again, we divide by n minus 1 to account for the bias that might exist from our sample. And the larger your sample, the less minusing one makes any difference. So it's always better to have a bigger sample or as big a sample as you can to have more accurate information. The great thing about standard deviation is that it actually appears on the graph of the normal distribution. So if this is a normal distribution, remember that this shows all of the different values for your data and the probability that that value would occur. So the mean, whatever value is your mean, is the value that's likely to most likely to happen, so it has the highest probability of occurring. And then the graph is symmetrical about this mean. Now the standard deviation appears on the graph. If you think about the values that are one standard deviation away from the mean in either direction, and think about the region in between those boundaries, so from here to here, for any data set that is normally distributed, 68% of the data will fall within one standard deviation of the mean, which is pretty cool. And we will learn more about this and other percentages later. But for now, it's important to just realize that the standard deviation does appear on the graph in a way that variance doesn't. You don't see variance really on the gra graph, but you do see standard deviation on a normally distributed graph.
So this distance right here would be the standard deviation and same with over here.